Well, g'day and welcome to Aussie Vision. Mike here, and today I've got the pleasure of chatting to Poland's 2022 Eurovision Song Contest participant and artist, Christian Ochman. Mate, thanks so much for joining us, taking time out to have a chat to us today. No problem. It's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. I can assume it's a really busy time for you guys at the moment. So we really do appreciate your time. Now, mate, for Aussie viewers who are trying to get to know you, I think you've got an origin story which will really relate to a lot of Australians. You grew up in the United States with European parents. Was that Polish influence always around you in your childhood? Uh, yeah, most definitely. Um, my parents, uh, it's funny, it's... Um, you know, they spent 25 years or, or over 25 years in, in, uh, in the States, but it feels like they haven't changed from the time they, <laughs> <laughs> they, they flew over there from Poland. But, uh, yeah, they moved during uh, communistic Poland uh, sometime, um, uh, you know, end of the 80s. And, um, and they held on to a lot of uh, the traditions that they had, uh, they had there. So uh, all the holidays that I, um, that I went through... Um, uh, all those events uh, they were uh, they were just very Polish uh, traditionally, uh, different than uh, everybody that was uh, really around me. So uh, you know, part of me felt like it was special, but when I was younger, part of me was like, you know, why why am I why do I have to go through it differently than everybody around me? But exactly, I definitely, uh, <laughs> everyone's eating hamburgers and you're eating that. pierogi. You know, like <laughs> well, no, I mean for <laughs> for okay, well, like. Christmas and and uh, and Easter and stuff like that. No, I don't think anybody was eating. Uh, I don't think anybody was eating burgers. But uh, <laughs> but uh, definitely um, uh, tradition uh, a little bit way they go up to it is a little bit different. Uh, in Poland, it's very Catholic. It's very it's very religious. Uh, and uh, in general, the the whole holiday is 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 pretty religious. But um, in America, it was kind of like on a smaller scale uh, a little bit. But with us, it was also like the type of food that we had uh, uh, at the table. And um, yeah, so, uh, you know, we, I uh, would take, uh, you know, classes, uh, Polish uh, classes every Saturday for about five hours uh, all throughout middle school lasted about four or five years and and then i just uh couldn't find the time to do that i was doing so many other things but uh yeah it, it was important for uh for my parents for me to learn my uh, national language uh, mm -hmm. even though my first language was english and i was born there uh you know by blood i'm i'm polish so uh it was important and i definitely appreciate uh that they they pushed me to do that yeah, I'm sure that's come in very, very handy later on in life, for sure. Yeah. Now, mate, your, your grandfather was a tenor. Your dad was in a rock band. Was there always a kind of expectation that you would go into music or was that something you completely chose very independently? Um, I kind of, it was something that I, I, I chose, but, um, my, you know, the thing with my family is, is that, uh, they want us want their kids to try as much uh, as as possible and and just choose what's best uh, for you without really uh, trying to let's say uh, spoil the kid because I feel like if you if you give a kid too many options and uh, then they don't they don't really have anything to get attached to uh, you know and uh, they they don't have like a focus it's hard to it's hard to believe that we'll ever get another Messi or Ronaldo just because you know they they were doing uh they were doing that since they were you know uh young ones or whatever so mm -hmm. um so you know here it was they were trying it but you know to to put as much effort as possible in each thing uh and as time went by those things start to become more and more concrete and other things started to fade away uh and uh like in the middle of high school I kind of uh, second or third year in you know, a sophomore or, or junior year I I decided that you know music is is what I really want to do, and I started to actually sing when I you know when I turned fourteen. So I haven't been really doing it for very very long, but uh, but uh, you know it was kind of always like in the back of uh, my mind. I, it was always in the back of my uh, family's mind. Just now, I wanted to ask: <laughs> you made that move after high school. You went off to Poland. You would have seen all your friends heading off to college in the states and everything you made that big change like 
did you feel it was a natural path or was that a really difficult decision for you to make at the time? Um, I feel like uh, the decision was easier than uh, the actual process of mm. uh, getting used to the whole setting and mm. environment because uh, it's pretty new. I, I've always been open to uh, new experiences. So uh, I wasn't really uh, it more and more excited me uh, moving uh, than, uh, you know, but, but all, all, at the same time, pretty upsetting, you know, leaving a lot of my uh, friends behind and, and uh, you know, my parents, my brother, my sister, but, uh, you know, part of my family, actually, most of my family lives in Poland. So uh, I knew I, I'd have that, uh, you know, in some sort of sense. Uh, and, um, but, you know, cultural wise, there are differences mm. and, um, I definitely have to talk about the weather because the weather is just <laughs> weather. You know, I I was in Maryland. I was on the East Coast, and uh, you know where where Washington D.C. is, and and basically um, the weather was just for me. It was it was oh it was perfect. Uh, but um, you know, in Poland it, it rains a lot. It, it's pretty gray. Oh. Um, and and the best time of the year is obviously uh summer. But um, so I had to get used to uh, some of that, the cultural differences, uh, the way people go up to things, um, you know, dynamic of, of, of work and um, let's say uh, morals uh, are, are slightly different. So there were there were a lot of uh, a lot of differences. I had to kind of get used to it. And uh, I feel like from the time that I've uh, that I moved to Poland to now, I've, I've definitely changed. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like. Uh, I feel like everybody changes over time as in like they stay themselves, but, a, you know, either a better version of themselves or a different version. Uh, so uh, I feel like I've, I'd like to believe that I've changed for, uh, for the better <laughs> uh, since I've moved, but, um, but yeah, uh, living in a different country with a, in a different setting, uh, even the way that people talk, it, um, you know, it does, it does uh, change you in some sort of sense and um, different, different lifestyle. Yeah, I'm sure, particularly at that age too, you're really discovering yourself as a person and all of a sudden you're in a new culture. I'm sure those language skills would have come in very, very handy at that point as well. But also just, yeah. to, have, just to have that family back up as well. It would have been very, very important. Now, mate, you went on to appear in The Voice Poland. You were one of those lucky people that won their season. So I wanted to ask, how did going through that process sort of benefit you as uh, as an artist and help you develop as an artist and even arm you for what you're about to face kind of thing here at Eurovision? Um, well, it, it was a very uh, intense uh, mm. two months. Uh, I, I don't think I've had many, many moments like that. You know, mm. uh, believe me, when I when I get a chance to be lazy and <laughs> I'll, I'll be as lazy as I can be, but... Uh, but, you know, if I have uh, priorities and I, I uh, have goals and uh, I, I want to get there, uh, you know, optimally and not and not, you know, taking uh, shortcuts, then uh, I know it's going to be a uh, pretty, pretty tough and intense here. Um, it was no different. I you know, what's important for a singer is uh, is actually being on stage and you know, the practice of uh, being up on stage and singing. And um, it's not the same if you're, you know, singing in the shower or just uh, alone at <laughs> at home so uh you know there was a quarantine i was kind of like uh, in, in my apartment for like four or five months alone and then i, I was kind of getting really bored because i watched everything on netflix i read every book <laughs> i had like three times so uh, i was getting really bored and i didn't know what to do so i decided to uh maybe try it even though i i was never really you know if i'm being honest i was never really into uh, the whole voice uh, sort of like um you so know re reality format yeah that reality yeah, format it's like can a, be difficult hmm. um it's it's well it's interesting i mean like i said I, I was open to uh to new things so i thought it would be interesting to try without you know going into it without having any um you know immense expectations if uh if it works out it would be it would be nice but i'd also be lying if i'd say that um you know the the exposition and the 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 promotion from it all uh, isn't important because mm -hmm. I, I feel like uh, no you know you wouldn't really go to something like that if that wasn't to a certain extent um, uh, important. I wanted to in some sort of way I guess put my name out there so I you know my part of one of my dreams would be to just uh, you know record in this studio release music and and you know that could be uh, that could be a way out to that. 
Mm -hmm. um, so it was super intense. And part of the work uh, relied on you know, being in front of the camera and some of those interviews, uh, recording uh, promotional stuff that, you know, hey, I'm Okma, you know, <laughs> like this and like that. I'm going to be singing this today. And uh, yeah, you, you get you get kind of used to it. Um, I feel like I'm still not really, really good at it uh, or <laughs> used to it. But but I feel like I'm definitely better at it than I was when I was uh, when I was taking part in the voice. Mm -hmm. um, so that aspect definitely helps me right now feel a little more comfortable, um, you know, during this whole process of uh, Eurovision. It, you do it once, it, it's, it might feel a little uncomfortable, but then, you know, after the 50th time or the 100th, then, uh, <laughs> you, uh, then you're like, okay, okay, okay. It's all good experience to have in the armory, I'd imagine, mate. So, you know, once you've been through it once, it's not so hard the next time. I want to jump through yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. I want to jump through to your song now, mate, River. First and foremost, congratulations. Fantastic song. It's had such a great yeah. reception. Now, you strike me as such a focused and, and like almost a quietly confident kind of artist. Yet you've talked about how River explores doubt, explores, you know, uh, possibly stressing about the future and uncertainty. Is that something you've had to work out to overcome or is it just a general theme you wanted to explore? Um, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm still working on it. Uh, I, I wouldn't necessarily, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that, um, only people my age or, or around my age, I feel like, I don't know. I don't really know what, what goes on in someone else's <laughs> head, but, uh, but I'd like to think that, you know, most people, uh, think about that and, you know, they stress out about something that's, you know, uncertain people, are more afraid of what they don't know rather than what they what they already know. So um, I feel like I'm I'm still working on it because the future is still uncertain, and uh, it's more about um, accepting uh, the reality of it all. That you know you can't really change what you can't control. Um, you kind of like go step by step uh, and just be uh, be happy with what you're doing in the moment. Uh, and um, and appreciate the i guess the little things it sounds pretty pretty cliche but uh like i said like in the song the moment those moments of uh inner peace and and calmness and you know when you can take a breather those are kind of like uh, also referring to uh the little things mm -hmm. when you uh when you're calm and you get to um get to relax uh you kind of don't want to let go of that uh but you know life kind of like goes in waves so mm -hmm. So, you know, you always got to get back to uh, that whole hectic uh, life. Yeah, no, fair enough. And I must admit, I do love the river uh, interpretation because rivers are so, first of all, universal. And second of all, the, the, you know, rivers can be calm. Rivers can be torrents. Rivers can be all sorts of things. So I think it's a very universal yeah. kind of thing there as well. So I really picked up on yeah. that. I wanted to ask, now listening to your album and your past work, you sing proficiently in Polish as well as English. Did you ever consider river to be in Polish? Was that ever a consideration? No, no. Uh, <laughs> River was supposed to be uh, in English. Um, well, I did created River with uh, some producers specifically for uh, Eurovision. So mm -hmm. uh, we had uh, we had a deadline. We didn't have a lot of time. Kind of had only a, a day in the studio to um, come up with something, come up with a demo, so I could send out for the national final. Um, it's kind of like spontaneous uh, last minute, uh, but uh, yeah, the, the plan when we when we um, met in the studios, the plan was just to uh, just to do it in English. If I'm if I'm gonna be trying maybe Eurovision and saying if I go, then uh, I probably feel more comfortable uh, singing obviously uh, in English. I, I still feel comfortable singing in Polish, but. Uh, I feel like for other people listening, I'd want as many uh, people as possible to, you know, understand what I'm what I'm trying to, uh, you know, give out and uh, and feel the song. Uh, I don't want to be the only one feeling, uh, <laughs> feeling the song. I wouldn't want to do uh, I wouldn't want to do something that I that I don't feel. So. Um, so, yeah, English was <laughs> English was the plan for, for this moment. No, fair enough, mate. Mass appeal, isn't it? It's, it's out there. It's, it's the world's universal language, basically. I wanted to ask, you've just gone through the pre-party phase. You participated in all the pre-parties. Um, Grueling stuff, I have to say. But first of all, <laughs> congratulations, mate. You, you smashed it 
every time. Uh, how important <laughs> you really were that that impressive. I mean, how's that that phase of the journey been for you? Um, it was uh, pretty. It was pretty nice, uh, new, um, but it's kind of like a, a rehearsal, a practice before the actual thing. Um, there, I just wanted to kind of get comfortable on that stage, uh, and then um, it was a new, you know, it was a, it was an amazing moment to uh, meet the meet the Eurovision fans. What type of fans are they? And um, and every country had its own atmosphere and, and climate. So, uh, you know, I loved I loved every part of it. I was uh, really happy to finally. Uh, <laughs> visit a different country i've been i've been in poland for um you know three years uh, mm-hmm. over without um you know going out anywhere else so uh it was really nice i was just happy happy to be there i uh, completely um appreciate what they what they did uh, you know how organized everything was mm-hmm. um maybe not every aspect but um i knew they wanted what's best for us and and um not only did they want us to perform well but um, see as much as the city as possible so uh cities so um yeah for me uh, it was uh, an amazing experience and uh, I- i'm really hoping to find time to go back you know to, to any one of those cities oh fantastic i was gonna say sometimes it can be very difficult for an artist to go out there get all prepared prepare uh, you know perform their one song for their three minutes and then do it all again the next day we've seen cases where sort of artists almost kind of fall out of love with their song before they even get to eurovision how's your relationship with river um (laughs) you know i've i've heard it uh many times (laughs) it's uh you know i um i don't i don't listen to my music um really uh you know privately uh but you know hearing it uh that often um it it doesn't when i when i get on stage and sing nothing else really really matters it's still Mm -hmm. my song and it's my job to uh uh you know sing it as well as possible and and try to make people feel what i what i you know have to offer so you know, for me, it doesn't uh, it doesn't bother me. Obviously, uh, the song isn't as uh, interesting or or nice to listen to as it, it as it you know was in the beginning. Uh, but that's uh, that's you know that's uh, that happens. You know that happens. But it doesn't it doesn't bother me that I that I uh, perform it because I still feel the song. Uh, like I said, I wouldn't do something a song that I that I don't feel. Uh, so. Um, I, you know, I feel like artists should be glad that they're singing only one song and not, uh, you know, not singing, you know, day after another, you know, a whole concert or more than one. Uh, so, um, so it's just the way that you look at it. I, I feel like, uh, well, I, I'm blessed to uh, mm-hmm. to be able to uh, take part in, in on a stage like that and be able to sing a, a song, you know, one of my own songs and, and feel it. So, uh, so yeah, so yeah, I just uh, immense gratitude. Yeah, it's a great way to introduce people to your other work as well. So, you know, if they hear this one song, they'll go and listen to the album like I have. Now, I wanted to ask about representing Poland. It's a massive country with such passionate, sort of engaged Eurovision fans. Now, that's got to come with some pressure. How do you turn that pressure around and, and use it to your advantage? Um, I, I really don't... Um... Well, first of all, Poland is actually a pretty, I'd say, a pretty small country. Uh, it's, okay. it's probably the size of size of Texas, uh, <laughs> which is uh, which is crazy to think. But but yeah, Poland uh, seems pretty big, but I'm pretty sure it's it's pretty small. But uh, it, there there is this uh, engagement uh, in in Poland uh, when it comes to Eurovision. But I, I don't really. It's more about this pressure of representing your country as best uh, as possible. And, and presenting yourself in the best light. So it doesn't really, um, I, I try not to really think about that. It doesn't really uh, bother me. Uh, there are going to be people in every country who who are engaged in your vision and people who, who aren't uh, so much. So, um, you know, it probably makes it a little easier when, uh, you know, that the fact that I know that 
those people exist, but I don't really know them personally. <laughs> uh, I feel probably more pressure when I know that my mom's at my concert. <laughs> um, I, I want it. I want it to be as uh, as good as possible for her, uh, for her to like it. And uh, and then I always await her uh, critiques after, which I'm always uh, open for. It's more about like this pressure of of, um, of presenting yourself in the best possible light um it's obvious that the fact that so many people are going to be watching that that adds this sort of a, a little pressure to it but you know whatever happens happens um and just i guess try to do your best focus on yourself and and hopefully that will be enough ah absolutely i was going to ask now i'm not going to ask about what your staging is going to look like you can't tell me i totally <laughs> i totally get it mate but i wanted to ask is, is the visual side of the performance something you wanted to get involved in or is that something you're more happy to sort of allow a creative team to take over and and you step away from a bit more um well i i proposed um type the type of visuals and then they uh, they sort of uh, just uh, created it so, um, so yeah, the process is, uh, it has to be a team effort. I wouldn't want to, you know, I don't know everything about everything. So, uh, I wouldn't want to just uh, take the reins on this and, and say, you know, listen to me, you have to do it this way. Mm -hmm. Uh, I propose one thing and, and, um, you know, and then, and then I have to see it, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, so, um, it's a, it's just a complete, uh, team effort and uh but like i said i wouldn't do something that i don't feel so if i propose something and then they propose something and you know we find this sort of balance and mix between the two and and i don't feel it then then we have to change it so uh um you know it's i looking at it um you know my face is going to be shown so people are going to be judging uh, me based on that performance and and I feel like if I have these visuals around me that I, I feel and I sort of feel that whole environment uh, of it all, then then I'll be able to really, uh, you know, feel the song more and, you know, feel more in the moment. Uh, so uh, it's important for me to to feel as much as possible um, during. So uh, it's just a, it's a team effort, you know. Now, mate, I've got to ask a couple of questions about Australia. Have you ever been to Australia? No, but I, I want to. I want to really bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know because I know you like travel. Now, I mean, you know, is you any plans to possibly come down and perform or even better, take a well earned break after this? <laughs> <laughs> I've uh I've I'd love to go. Uh I just don't know when I'll when I'll find time for that. But uh I, I'm definitely planning on uh, on visiting. Uh I, I need to. I need to. <laughs> I love Australia and I haven't even been there yet. So Oh, terrific. I'm sure you'll be welcome with open arms, mate. Now, a couple of things just as an artist, you're in a situation, particularly with Eurovision, but all the time, everything you put out is always getting critiqued. You're always getting feedback. How do you personally deal with things like social media? Are you a read the comments kind of guy or are you like, nah, I, I, I'll do my thing and everyone can have their opinions? Um, it, it, it depends on uh, what I have to do if i have a lot of things to do then i don't really like metal and, and looking at the comments but I'll, I'll i'll always go back to it and and uh, there will be a moment where, you know depending on what uh, goes out there that I'll, I'll check it out but i i don't know for me it's important to uh look at uh, critiques given out by uh by people who are actually judging you that mm -hmm. i feel like that would wouldn't be very smart for uh, people to um you know turn their back on something like that because those are the people who are you know, based on their opinion, uh, you know, that it comes out your success. So uh, if you uh, if you turn your back on that, then you're not really sure how, how they will react on, on things in the future. I feel like it's important. So uh, for me, I, I've always been open uh, to uh, critiques and, and um, you know, I can tell if, uh, if a critique is just like kind of uh, on purpose just to uh, put something down or if mm -hmm. it's actually... Uh, you know, worth listening to. Um, everybody has their own opinion, which uh, you must respect. Mm -hmm. uh, no, fair enough, mate. Take the good comments when they come. Trust me. No one writes anything nice about me on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt now, that. I doubt that. <laughs> now, just quickly, my last question, mate. Poland are through to the World Cup in November. I'm sure the whole country is very happy about that. I know you're a football fan, mate. If you were ever approached to, like, you know, sing or write the official song for, for the Polish uh, football team, would you do it? Right, a 
song for the Polish. Yeah, you know how some teams have like official songs that they take to the the the, the tournament. Would you would you be interested you mean in something like, like the like that? national anthem? No, <laughs> well, I mean you could. I'm <laughs> sure you could probably sing the national anthem, but but um yeah, like you know, like the, the teams have official songs that they they take to the 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 tournament and stuff like that. Would you be interested in I, doing something like that? I don't know if my if my style of music would would <laughs> would work with that, but I could definitely uh, maybe try. I don't think that um, I'm not saying that any of them would would want me to do that, but uh, <laughs> but you know if someone uh, you know suggested me something like that, I feel like it'd be cool to try. But it's also kind of like, eh, if uh, if Lewandowski or Bostikowski yeah. uh, or Piszczek, <laughs> uh even Gleek, uh, asked me to do it, then. Uh, then maybe, then maybe. Oh, come they on, personally I could, have to ask me. <laughs> I, I could imagine you doing a hands in the air banger with the crowd loving it. I really could. Now, mate, yeah, I, like, <laughs> everyone singing along to it. I can really see it. Now, mate, I think I have oh, taken man. up enough of your time today. Once again, mate, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time here to speak to Aussie Vision on behalf of all the team and from everyone in Australia. Good luck, mate. Really, really good. Thank luck. you. Thank you for thank you for having me. Not a problem. And all the viewers out there in Australia, Ockman is in our semi-final. He'll be song number 14. I'm sure you're gonna love it. Get voting. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Pleasure, mate. Good See luck. Ya. Take care. See ya.